Our gospel this morning for this first Sunday of Advent comes from Mark chapter 13. Jesus says, Be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. In the days after that time of trouble, the sun will grow dark, the moon will no longer shine, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers in space will be driven from their courses. Then the Son of Man will appear, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send the angels out to the four corners of the earth to gather God's chosen people from one end of the world to the other. Let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branches become green and tender and it starts putting out leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you will know that the time is near, ready to begin. Remember that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows, however, when that day or hour will come, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. Only the Father knows. Be on watch. Be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It will be like a man who goes away from home on a trip and leaves his servants in charge after giving to each one his own work to do and after telling the doorkeeper to keep watch. Watch, then, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. It might be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or at sunrise. If he comes suddenly... He must not find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to you all, watch. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you. It's hard to believe it's Advent again, isn't it? Advent marks the beginning of a new church year. But instead of making resolutions and plans during this season, we the church are called into a period of waiting. It's a time when we remember how people waited for hundreds of years for God's Messiah to come and save them. And it's a time to focus on how we're again waiting for this Messiah, Jesus, to come, to return, to make things right. In our gospel today, Jesus gives us instructions on how we should wait, repeatedly saying things like, be on your guard, Be on watch, be alert, keep watch, and at the end, simply watch. Mark's gospel is generally obsessed with action. Most of the time, Mark focuses more on what Jesus does than what he says, so this chapter stands out because Jesus has a lot to say, so we know it must be important. And yet, For such an action-focused gospel, this idea of simply waiting and watching feels honestly unimportant and even unwelcome. This seems especially true this year because we're all tired of waiting, aren't we? You may be waiting to take that trip you have planned. You may be waiting for medical test results or for news about a job you need. You may be waiting to hold a new grandchild And I know that we're all waiting for a sense of normalcy to return when we can gather in the usual way and go about our lives without worrying about this awful virus. Still, today's gospel raises an important question. What should you do while you're waiting? This week, I took our oldest daughter, Julia, to the orthodontist. And as I sat in the waiting room, I looked around and noticed that everyone was on their phone. There might be not much else to do in a situation like this, and I'll admit, I looked at my phone too, but these days it seems we rely too much on our phones and other devices. This isn't to dismiss the benefits of technology, like how it's enabled us to continue to work, to build relationships, and to worship during this pandemic. But make no mistake, technology has a darker side we can't afford to ignore. In the book, Trouble, I've seen that some of us studied this past summer, which focuses on how to confront racism from a faith perspective, 
The author, Drew Hart, refers to our technology and other cultural diversions as, quote, weapons of mass distraction. His play on words tells us how our interest in these diversions often distracts our attention from important issues like racism and other forms of injustice, issues we need to address before they cause our destruction. Now, as an aside, and at the risk of being completely hypocritical, I recommend that those of you with Netflix watch a documentary drama called The Social Dilemma. It highlights interviews with important figures from companies like Google, Facebook, and Twitter to show that we have an eclectic addiction to social media that's threatening to unravel our relationships and even society itself. And I'd appreciate hearing your thoughts on this important matter. So again, the title is The Social Dilemma. But let's get back to our gospel reading where there are two main things I'd like to highlight that offer us clues and how God would have us watch and wait. The first thing to note is that this passage is written in an apocalyptic style. Apocalypse means revelation, and this type of literature typically reveals how God will someday set things right. Oftentimes, apocalyptic writings deal with God's judgment of evil and God's saving of the righteous. But here in our passage today, Jesus focuses only on God's saving activity. In verse 27, Jesus says that God will gather, quote, God's chosen people from one end of the world to the other. But before we get hung up on that word chosen, we should again remember that Jesus doesn't talk about judgment here, only being saved. Any judgment is in God's hands, and we remember that we are made righteous by God's work, God's grace, not our actions. Be assured, though, that we are all God's chosen and beloved children. In the verses that follow, Jesus then continues this idea of redemption when he talks about a fig tree. Two chapters earlier, Jesus curses a fig tree that isn't bearing fruit, and it soon withers. Yet here, Jesus talks about a fig tree that is green and growing, possibly even the same tree. Again, the emphasis is on salvation over judgment, life over and even after death. And God is the one to make all of this happen. This is where waiting is good news because it's not up to you and me to set things right. God will take care of us all. However, the second thing I'd like to highlight in this passage is the active role Jesus calls us to play in this process as people assured of our future. Near the end of the gospel today, Jesus says that this time of waiting, quote, will be like a man who goes away from home on a trip and leaves his servants in charge after giving to each one his own work to do. Work to do. So our waiting and watching isn't entirely passive. You and I are gifted to do God's work Well, we wait for God to do God's part. And earlier in this chapter, before today's passage, Jesus tells us about one of the jobs that we all share. He says that when faced with difficult circumstances as we wait, we'll have the opportunity to share the good news of God's saving love with all people. How often do you and I think of our work as a part of God's work? How often do you and I think of our entire lives as an opportunity to share the good news of God's saving love with all people? Our December theme at Calvary is Jesus Comes. But this doesn't only mean that we remember that Jesus came long ago and look forward to him coming again. When we say Jesus comes, we also recognize his active presence in our lives today. And we are called to intentionally grow in our awareness of Jesus among us. This Advent, let me suggest that we take note about how we watch and wait 
Do we automatically turn to our phones and other devices for distraction when we have a spare moment? Do we avoid silence by turning on the TV, radio, or something else to entertain ourselves? None of this is wrong by itself, of course. What is an issue is when our forms of entertainment and communication become our constant preoccupation, when our addiction to noise distracts us from listening to hear God's voice and watching to see God's activity among us. So this Advent, instead of seeking distraction, may we seek connection. Connection with God in silence and prayer, worship and devotion. Connection with one another in conversation that uplifts and encourages us during this ongoing pandemic. Connection that helps us understand the work God is calling us to as individuals and as the church while we wait and watch for Jesus' active and saving presence in our lives. Amen.